Loved it. Yeah, Loved it? Dude, Loved what are we it. talking about? This is sick. I really did not like this at all. I wanted one glass. I'd pay <laughs> less than $10 a bottle for this. All right. We are back with another edition of Blind Wine Tasting, and this one is a special one because the festive season and the holiday season is well and truly upon us. So there's one drink that absolutely epitomizes holidays, and that's sparkling wine. So we've got six sparkling wines in front of us today, selected by our dear friends at Sometimes Always. If you would like a discount on any of these wines, some of these are pretty ritzy, so you're definitely going to be wanting a discount. The link is below to join our Discord channel for the discount, which is 10% off each of these wines today. And since we're in the festive season, I think it'll put it over you guys what do you drink during the holiday season do you have any traditions are there any particular styles of wine you like during that part of the year i myself uh, it's not a tradition it's like christmas morning about 10 30 a.m like go over to mum and dad's and we pop over a bottle of champagne um, we've done that for the last few years and i probably will continue to do that uh, this year as well because champagne season is a good season let us know in the comments below if you have any uh, good little holiday drink tips or any any ideas um, and something we can nick ourselves but uh, without too much mucking around let's taste some wine bubbly boys let's go uh, wine number one. Genuinely. There we go. That's got some spark to it. We got there, baby. All right, let's see. It's got some gas in the tank. It smells like Blanc de Blancs. So a lot of like kind of pineapple, lemon, lots of stone fruit there as well. And it's got this kind of uh, what we call autolysis or autolytic characters, which is nuttiness. Uh, savory like bready characters which makes champagne really special or traditional method sparkling wines very special already my head's already in method chef and was or method traditional the traditional method and and in probably already in france to be honest i reckon it's a sparkling chardonnay isn't that what most sparkling wine is like blanc de blanc is chardonnay really interesting definitely got this really nice pineapple quality and the acidity is quite fresh there's a bit of sweetness here as well, so I don't necessarily think it's probably in that brute level, maybe a little bit a bit more sweet, but really interesting style of wine. I need to taste that again. Just had a bit of coffee. Just want to bring my mouth into equilibrium. Damn, that's good. Damn, that's awesome. And I'm just going to, I'm going to grab three of this one. I mean, I'll, I'll crush this all day. Just when I'm looking at this style, I want it to be kind of up there. Wanting to spend one bottle, like, like, honestly, if price was no object, I'd drink champagne every fucking Friday. But if I'm going to buy one bottle of sparkling wine for this holiday season, I want it to be at that kind of price point. I'm just going to buy the one bottle. But this one's actually, I'd probably drink pretty regularly because I think there's a lot of quality here. Wine number two. Uh, so we're going even darker, denser in colour. And this, to be honest, when I'm looking at it, is sort of like there's, there's what we just had, which I sort of associate with really fine, well-made champagne. And I look at this and I'm like, it's just a little bit too dark. It's just a little bit too orange. It looks juicy. Nice and clear, so it's definitely been filtered, I'd say. Yeah, okay. A little bit more varnish than the last one in terms of the nose. Wow, really strange. Really cool. I quite like it. I mean, it's got everything that you love about orange wine, but it's fizzy too. So if you like orange wine and sparkling wine, this is the wine for you. Wow. Cracking. Absolutely cracking wine. Really fine beads, so much so I'm the second person to try this of the three of us. The beads almost dissipated. Though I know this has spent an astronomic time on Lees. I'd probably hazard a guess at north of four years. For this one here, I'm gonna drop uh, $120 a bottle and I'm gonna buy 12. Yep, look, uh, I think I've done this before, lanolin. Um, I'm not sure if that's actually the right term. But I don't like this wine very much, I'll be honest with you. And that's probably more to do with me than it is to do with the wine. I'm sure it's delightful and the boys have been raving about it, but this needs orange juice. Mimosa, this is a mimosa sparkling wine for me. Watch it be really expensive, mimosa. The acidity is great, the texture is great. This might be something, this could be like a Pinot Blanc Ginzy thing, I'm not really sure but I think it's fantastic. And it's starting to lean back into this more pineapple end as well. This is like one of those really good value wines. I'm probably gonna end up buying a whole bunch. I'm thinking right now about buying a lot of wines for Christmas and sort of the holiday period. This is what I would like to have on Christmas day, no matter what time, 9 a.m., 5 p.m., responsibly, of course, but probably all day. Wine number three, I see a bead. There's actually some bubbles left in this one. How exciting. Kind of in the middle of the last two, to be honest. It's sort of more of a, like, bronzy gold than it is a bronzy gold. It's more of a bronzy yellow, like... I have no idea what's going on here. This, oh, this might be just a... Actually, no, this is a Pinot, Pinot Noir Rosé, I reckon. It smells like got that kind of strawberry watermelon thing going on. Um... All right, full bars. I did a COVID test this morning. I can't smell shit right now. <laughs> I've been making all these smelling notes up. 
It's hard. Ah, oh, fuck. Ah, oh, I had to come clean with you guys. I'm just trying hard not to dribble into the glass. Oh, goodness. I don't have COVID, though, so that's good. Uh, it still exists, apparently. Ask your doctors about it. Bright, zippy, awesome finish on this, which is actually quite... Not, I wouldn't call it necessarily rounded, but it's sharp enough. Oh man, crisp, just finished. And now I'm like, ooh, salivating. Want a little bit more. I get to feel the acidity rather than having it sort of wrapped in a voluptuousness like the other two. A bit sweet. I think it's a little bit too sweet. That kind of unbalances the, the fruit flavor here. Mm. Yeah, it's just a little bit too sweet, unfortunately. Um, I just I just think that palate shape is balanced enough. It's just it's got a little bit too much of that kind of syrupy texture to it. Cool, cool. Uh, I would pay thirty five dollars a bottle for it, and I'd buy twelve. I'd buy twelve of the first three, hands down. Love it. Number four. Hey, that is something you don't. This is we're definitely in that pet nat spectrum, but there's. Look at all of the, the bubbles are really fine. The reason I say that this is a pet nat is that it's cloudy and pet nats are natural and nature is cloudy. Underwhelming on the bubbly front. Very like short, uh, very like foamy, but very flat. Doesn't have that kind of persistence. It looks better than it. The bubbles look better than they actually kind of present on the palate. The flavor of the wine though, is really fun. I'm waiting for it to go mousy, but it's not. I think this is a hyper natty little number that um, it's probably like no salt or anything like that. The bead on it's actually kind of quite nice. The mousse is really fun, super fresh. This pineapple skin and like freshly crushed basil is just fun. I think I'm right. I think it's gonna be a natural pet nat. And I think it is a natty wine because it does have that sort of like, -ding 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 -ding. like it's quite country. Um. I'd spend uh, 30 bucks a bottle on it and I'd buy three bottles. Me, personally, would find the technicality of it a little bit distracting. But if you're just drinking wine for wine's sake and it's a bit of fun, this is cool. Uh, I'm gonna grab three bottles of this one, uh, just because it's really fun. It's got that funky, refreshing, tangy thing. Uh, I'm gonna say 60 bucks, nah. Um, but I actually quite like it. I think it's really good fun. Wine number five, pink sparkling. Pink sparkling wines are fun. Pink is fun, sparkling is fun. I just, I, I can't see this color coming from grapes. It's just so neon salmon. Tell you what, I've been wrong before. Yeah, so this is why it's that color. So on the nose, quite a interesting color. This is this is either Brachetto or a Moscato d'Asti or a pink Moscato or something like that. But I've seen sort of Brachetto is look, looking very, very similar to this before. And the other boys drank this, were they like, Henry's gonna love this wine? Idiots. I love this wine, dude. This is it. This is party juice. You don't need orange juice for this one. You could put this in like, I feel like I wanna put a shot of vodka in this. It'd be like a cruiser, man. This is juicy and sweet. This is killer. A glass, thanks. $9.99. On special bargain bin. I'm really sorry. I just do not enjoy this wine. It's just it. It feels sickly and sweet and mass produced. I just I, I'm not into it. All class. All class. Really, I really do think that's like a briquette or something like that. That's really cool. A cloying sweetness. In fact, it finishes dry, but there is enough sweetness there to be able to to offset a decent amount of that acidity. So it's not completely bone dry. So this genuinely is like a raspberry ice block or something. Drinking this cold by the pool. This might be one of my favourite wines we've ever had on this show. Not because it's necessarily the best, but just because like there is such a time to drink this, and I spend a lot of time doing that shit. Hot day. You guys all have the day off from work and you're like, fuck. You know, Piz has actually got a pool. It's pretty warm. Let's go over there. Oh, yeah, we're always at Piz's house. Like, I feel like we're putting too much reliance on his family to host us. Don't worry, man. We'll bring a couple of bottles of this over. No one's going to care because this is so tasty. It buys you access to pools in summer. That's the sort of wine I want. And finally, now this, pretty cool. Very kind of pale gold again, like in that Pinot Noir Rosé spectrum. The bead and the, the bubbles look absolutely perfect because that's been sitting there for like 10 minutes and the, the fine lines are just going fantastically. Lovely, lovely wine. This is my, my daily driver. This is what I will be drinking uh, copious quantities of. I think that's a fantastic wine. I drop around about $36 a bottle on it, I'll buy 12. What that is is six bottles. It just sits completely in the middle of this whole lineup for me. It's not the most exciting, it's not the least exciting, it's not the most drinkable, it's not the least drinkable. You could drink it with orange juice, you don't need to drink it with orange juice. Um, that's why it's six bottles. I mean, that is a, that's a cracking example of sparkling wine. I don't think it's like baller, but I think it's got, it's great fresh acidity, it's got wonderful balanced fruit flavors, the sweetness is really in check, 
I love, yeah, Pinot dominant, likely. It's very persistent with its flavor. Like that is just, that's got flavor that I'll chew on well and truly outside. It still has a mineral lick to it. It's not so serious. There's, a, there's not necessarily like a massive seriousness to this wine, which is what I find really appealing because when you drink serious wines all the time, you kind of miss the joy of wine. It can kind of be a lot of work. I don't know what to say about this wine other than uh, well done to the winemaker. And I think I might have been drinking these two straws. Like these are the first drinks that I've had today, but I feel pissed. Like what's going on? Sparkling wine just does it to you. Yeah, this is awesome. I hope this is a good price because I really, really like it. Optimistically, $45. But yeah, I think this is great. Definitely, I feel like it's a Pinot dominant uh, sparkling wine. I think it's fantastic. The flavor is so persistent. Uh, I would love to see more sparkling wines listed in the lineup. Great. Uh, I'm, I, there's some curveballs in here. Let's see what the boys think because I reckon we're gonna have some chat. Uh, bubblies. Haven't yeah. had a bubbly lineup well for uh, literally 12 months when we did the pet episode. Oh, of course. Oh, yeah, yeah, I was wondering the last time Remember was. Remember yes. when? Did you guys, um, did you guys watch Ozark? No. Nah. Okay, well there's a quote in that where Ruth says, I don't know shit about fuck. And that really came to me. <laughs> <laughs> like, I gave up on um, trying to guess varietals and all I did mm. was, do I need orange juice in this? Well, that's a really good <laughs> game to play. Because I think there are wines in here that would be really better really, really, or worse. Really, 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 uh, so let's start with wine number one, uh, which looks kind of the most champagne-esque out of the wines in the lineup, I reckon. Maybe yeah. between that or uh, one other one, I reckon. Yeah. Uh, but this was really cool. I like this. Uh, straight off the bat, I was just 12, 12 bottles I wanted and I want to pay $75 a bottle for it. I thought it was all class. This was just sort of like, uh, you roll into any bar and it's just like, oh yeah, we've got a house Blanc de Blanc. Um, oh, well, I think you're absolutely right. I think you have guessed absolutely correctly. It is, I reckon it's Chardonnay. Great. Lockie. Blanc de Blanc right there. House Blanc de Blanc right there. Man knows he's Blanc de Blanc. Genuine oh, house. Oh, house to blow. I fucking crown, bro. That's actually That's very awesome. impressive. Yeah. I was pouring this at Fringe last year. It's <laughs> <laughs> um, so under the same crew as the Alpha Box. Yeah, prices. Alpha Box. Yeah. Because Gluttony last year was sponsored by Alpha Box and Dice, and I was literally yeah. pouring this all yeah. fucking February last year. Well, it's a good wine, man. Uh, it's a good fun. wine. Yes, yeah, seventy it's, bucks, Mister over here, champagne yeah. style. And no, it, it punches well and truly above its weight. Yeah. Uh, which is really cool. Uh, it's it is Chardonnay dominant, mm. uh, so I'll give it to you on that one. But it's got Sauvignon Blanc, Chenin Blanc, Riesling, and Petit Beslier. Gewürztraminer and, and Gruner. So Jeez. it's a Barossa Valley fruit salad right here. Yeah, one number two. Chaos. I really, really liked this. Boom. Ah, uh, no, this needs orange juice. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> yes. don't desecrate Dude, this. You never take this off. This now. is yeah, okay. donkingly good. <laughs> this is on point. 120 bucks and 12, please. Yeah, I, I, I went 90 and 12. Are you including the price of the orange juice in that? Like, I know Ooh, fruit's expensive. Man. Okay, come on, let's Shame. show him how he's wrong, Lucky. <laughs> Remember when I said I don't know shit about fuck? Oh, fuck yeah! Very good, Dealey Fortier. This is, this is uh, a particular level of uh, champagne. This is absolute grower champagne. Um, is it Igli Ure? L-U-R-A. L-U-R-A, there yeah. you go. Uh, is one of the kind of famed grower uh, champagne producers. This is crew. This is crew, yeah. Oh, so this is a single vineyard. Fucking hell, good. Man, I really biffed that up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mate. paying 75 bucks for a $24 bottle of wine, so I can't really Yeah, who's yeah. winning or losing? <laughs> <laughs> it's just the, it's, this, is the, this is one of the finest champagnes that you can buy for the money, because from here things start to really... You're at the bottom of that hockey stick in terms of price and quality. Yeah, right. So yeah, 180 in Oz, it's a lot of money for sparkling. But you go anywhere north of quality from here, and we're really not talking about a lot much higher quality, but you're talking about doubling and doubling them, double yeah, your price. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, then you get to like your fucking Cristal yeah. and it's like yeah. $650. Turns into that shit in like uh, Formula One racing where yeah. to go like one tenth of a second faster per lap, it costs X millions yeah. of dollars. Honestly, yeah. that's a very really, interesting yeah. and fascinating comparison of yeah. like F1 and champagne because you know, they both go hand in hand. Yeah, shit, <laughs> shit that I don't understand, yeah. Uh, next one. Um, it, it, mm, yeah, kind of, nah, not, not for me. Oops. Uh, <laughs> you loved it? Oh yeah, big I, I thought this was really fun. It looked, for me, it's just like, when I'm looking for this style of wine, I'm not. I like. I'm the complete opposite. I don't want it to be blended with OJ. Yeah. I want to. If I'm going to drink a mimosa, I'm going to drink a beer. 
kind of thing. So for this, like, I want this one to stand out by itself, and this one it would be perfect for a fucking mimosa. Okay, so I said definitely don't put orange juice in this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Lockie, what do we got? Oh, okay. Wow, okay. That'd be some really cool Prosecco. Wouldn't put orange oh, juice Dowser. in Oh, Dowser! Yeah, nice. Fuck, awesome. Yeah, cool. So this is epic stuff from uh, your good old mate, the Piccadilly Valley. Oh, Piccadilly yep. Valley. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Indistinguishable. This is it's hard Pinot to do. It's Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. Yeah, yep. yeah. That's yep. why it's bronze. Probably. Yeah, probably. So Pinot Dowser, which I've seen multiple times, Almost, you could fool yourself into thinking you're drinking genuine champagne. They're yeah. probably the best at what they do. I, I did in the myself in <laughs> like, Well, you, be, you yeah. beat both of us there, so well done. Yeah. You fucking absolutely pipped yeah. us. I think, I think in general, we can just judge uh, pretty accurately, and you should trust everything that Henry says, $100 and below a bottle. Uh, when That's you actually, wanna, yeah. When you want to talk about $100 and half point. a bottle, yeah. we'll yeah. be here for the, you. The king yeah. of hashtag affordable drops. <laughs> yeah. Henry Doyle. I've never had more than $100, so I don't know how to spend more than $100. Sort of thing. Uh, one number four. What the fuck was this? Okay, something you definitely should put orange juice in. OJ, big time, yeah. yeah it's mainly, more, mainly to mask the smell of butyric acid. It's uh, got some funk. It's we got call some it reduction it there. Too All right, is this uh, the Emperor's New Clothes or not? Lucky. Inflation. Halfway. Yeah. Yeah, it's inflation. Just the shirt, no pants. Yeah. I have no idea what the fuck that is. Uh, can we David Spilato. It's an L is what David it is. David Spilato. So, gar sparkling Garganega. <laughs> it's, from, it's from Beneteau. It's cool. Spa naturally sparkling Garganega from Beneteau. So it is a pet nat, naturally. Yes, yes, yep, 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 sure. Yep, 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 yeah, well, yep, it must yep, be. Yep. That is absolutely fascinating. <laughs> uh, that is honestly... That's definitely one of the most unique ones I've tried in a long time. Sparkling Garganiga. Like, sparkling Suave, really. Yeah. Wacko. All right, boys. Let's let's see how we went here. Loved it. Loved yeah, it? Dude, Loved what are we it. talking about? This is sick. I really did not like this at all. I wanted one glass. I'd pay less than $10 a bottle for this. I thought this was king shit. It was worth... I optimistically <laughs> said $30. Yeah, yeah, I can yeah. totally see why you like this. And I completely yeah. get, and it's... Totally for you. Yeah. Like, and there's no, I'm not trying to shame you or anything no. for liking that. It's just like, we have found the wine that splits us yeah. so oh, perfectly. Dude, when I tasted this, I asked Lockie, I was like, did the boy say I'd like this? And he said no. And I'm like, I'm honestly disappointed. Because this is so obviously <laughs> oh, Henry I would wine. I that in a jug, like straight yeah. to a tumbler. With fucking slice. ice and yeah. fruit. Yeah. Anyway, right. what do we got? We've got to know what this is. Oh, dude, what I'm going to drink so much of this piss this summer. What do we got? Adelaide Oh, I like the label too. That's Pinot. a sexy bottle. Sparkling Pinot Noir. Fucking of course it is. I love there that. Is, there is a lot of RS in this. There's like at least 30 grams of RS in this. This is... What, uh, how, it's bird, it's what percentage style. is it? How the fuck did that colour get in? 12%. Oh, no, it's... it's Okay, so how did the colour get in? Um, this is a very popular style for those like outside of Australia. Bird in hand sparkling. There's a bit in the States. There's a bit yeah. overseas was this sparkling that kind of took over Australia by storm. That's what uh, my mum drinks pretty exclusively. Dirty, dark little secret. Uh, the colour in that is 100% Shiraz. Thought so. so it's like they make a sparkling Pinot Noir, then they hit it with a bit of residual sugar, and then they add colour, which is a very legitimate yeah, move it's fine. In, in champagne, yeah, where they'll 100%. add a red wine to get the right colour. But it's very much a constructed thing. Make wine like that, I just think it's really fun. I'm, I'm, it's, it's the same crowd, Henry, like that. It makes total sense. Look, I yeah. you guys will be into this, and it's fantastic. Yeah. I think it's, it, it has a place. Uh, uh, one, last one, one last one. One last left. Yeah, I thought this was excellent as well. Yeah, I look. really loved this too. Straight onto it, 12, yeah. and I was in that, again, that Blanc de Blanc territory, Carvery territory. I reckon this is Pinot dominant, sparkling. I reckon it's Aussie. I mm -hmm. think it's great. I think it's going to be, hope it's good value. Uh, I'm getting 12, and I'm happy to pay 45 bucks. I thought this was the most middle of the road. Like, with, with my tastings, I was like, either really not into it, really into it, and this was just fine. Scheme of what you've said today, I think that gives it's a positive accurate. tick yeah. for this wine. Positive tick, definitely. Yeah. What do you got, what do you got? Uh, 40, 6 for 40. Uh, 12 for 45. 36 and 12. Hey, we're in the slot here. Well, actually, that's pretty... What is going on? Oh, 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 we need a piece of pocket. Uh, so this, I believe, Barringwood. 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 Oh, this is a new one. So this is a Tassie uh, Pinot dominant blend of bubbles, 2017. Honestly, this is phenomenal value. For me, if I was, so, uh, like, I'm 27 and I'm gonna have my, like, friendmas or whatever. 
I'm a 27 year old, so I'm gonna buy a bunch of that, right? Yeah. Drop it around. And yeah, go, drop it yeah. around. Everyone's yeah. having some nice sparkling wine. That's not bad at yeah. all. I'm a, I'm a 27 year old that can use wine as a tax write off. I'm gonna buy that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It is sort of like. I paid both of you guys for buying this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Legitimately, the, wine, the, the only time that I'm drinking that wine is when I go to Brendan's house on Christmas Day. Like, that's genuinely the only time yeah. I drink it. Yeah. So you're buying this this Christmas? I'm buying, well, yeah. And you're I'm, buying I'm that buying this that. Christmas? Yeah. And I'm buying this this Christmas. What is wine for the people's wine of the week? No. Yes. Honestly, no. If we're going just by score, it has to be this. Twelve. For folks uh, here or overseas, we're voting for Barringwood and fuck LUR8, coming with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm, I'm coming with that as well. See you next week and happy holidays. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs>